I recently had on internationally known and recognized private investigator Ben Harrell from San Diego. Now he is also the founder of the PI Museum on Wheels. I personally am so fascinated by this whole private eye detective spy lifestyle, so we're going to pick that discussion back up today, but focus on a man by the name of John Eck. He is so fascinating and is survived by his son, Gary Eck, who lives right here in the Keys. He is a regular voice on 104.9 The X Radio. Gary, thank you for being here Welcome, the show Jenna. With me today. It's so nice to be here. <laughs> well, and in the morning, too. And bright and early. You know, right, us Gary? nighttime DJs don't do mornings very well. <laughs> well, thank you for getting up early this morning. You're very welcome. Gary, Ben actually made his trip down here to Key West specifically to see you. Yes, to be on my radio show. Mm -hmm. Well, why was no, that so important? No, that was, <laughs> well, it was more a little than bit that. of that, right? Yeah. A, a little more than that. Um, ben, and I met, so uh, ben and I met after my mother passed away a few years ago. A friend of mine was helping me sell some of the weird spy gear that my father had collected over his life and career. Mm -hmm. um, ben came a little late in the auction, got a few very choice uh, world, mm, like 1950 Cold War pieces of uh, recording equipment and to put in this museum. When he found out about my father and who he was, he wanted more and more and ended up building a whole section to John Eck, a tribute to John Eck, and my mother, Elsa Eck, who was also a uh, Navy intelligence and a spy, and they were involved in the Bay of Pigs invasion, and he owned a gun shop in Miami, and they owned a security company, and they had, when I was a child, they had had 17 businesses, most of them juggling at the same time all kind of based on the spy uh, life and my father being a grand jury investigator and deputy constable and you know just being involved with every kind of uh, facet of, of the judicial and law system including the anti-communist regime which is something they started to uh, they were they were fearful that Fidel Castro was going to go in and bring the Russians and become a communist country even though our government helped Fidel get into the position mm -hmm. to over overturn the previous administration uh, Batista and Raul, I think it was. So, um, Dad, Dad had an interesting lifestyle anyway. He was a, a maker of uh, World War II fighting knives, and then did it again for the Bay of Pigs invasion, and then did it again for the Vietnam War. His knives are still being made today, Eck knives. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have one here. Well, I totally understand now why Ben really yeah. wanted to make this trip. This is an see, original. Is this going to hurt me, Gary? Not, not, not unless you <laughs> want it to. It's very sharp. Okay. Um, a gentleman sent this to me to have a new point put on it. This is an original World War II knife. Mm -hmm. Dad made about 300,000 knives by hand, mm -hmm. hiring handicapped employees in Hamden, Connecticut to grind the blades and, uh, and put the handles together. And they weren't a military contract. They were actually sold to servicemen. Wow. So uh, this is one of the original knives, and it's probably seen some battle. Mm, absolutely. And, uh, there's I'm very, sure it has. very few of them just floating around, you know, uh, yard sales mm -hmm. and stuff. That's probably won some battles. Too, yeah, right? yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, Gary. So the knives led, you know, in, into uh, he would meet military and police type personnel, mm -hmm. and it just changed his whole career and his lifestyle. Yeah, Gary, you're talking about your father, and there are so many things mm -hmm. that your father has done. What would you say you're most proud of about your father's life? Me. No. <laughs> Good answer. Um, I would say that he, he always fought for justice and righteousness. And when he saw uh, dirty or corrupt politicians or policemen, uh, he started the Internal Affairs in Dade County Police Department to find out why certain police officers were doing things on the side they shouldn't have been doing, uh, abusing their power. And same with politicians, and he never backed down from anyone from the governor of the state of Florida to working with the presidents of the United States to renting the equipment to the Watergate, uh, the three Cubans that went into the Watergate Hotel for President Nixon mm -hmm. to find out what the Democratic Party was doing. We found a receipt that my father had rented them the equipment. So he was a very mm -hmm. integral part in American history, I'm sure. He absolutely yeah. was a very important part. And me, of I'm just, you know, whatever's, whatever's <laughs> left over. No, now how does Key West tie into your well, father? We lived in Miami, mm -hmm. and we always came down to Key West. Dad was good friends with Captain Tony, uh, Mel Fisher, uh, a lot of the other Key West characters. Uh, There's a little gun shop, a little known gun shop down here called Moe's at a barber shop downtown, mm -hmm. and we would come and visit him because we had the gun shop in Miami, and mm -hmm. we just, uh, I've always been in Key West ever since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So coming down here, uh, I, I, it was during the Bush administration, I think I was on my way to Cuba, 
at the time, but I got stuck here because they wanted me to do a video for a Lifetime channel about the Fancy Fest girls getting airbrushed. Okay. I had never been to Fancy Fest, so I thought, well, that would be a good time to go. Mm -hmm. I came a week early, got stuck here for Hurricane Wilma, went back to Miami. There was no work. There was nothing, no electric. And I said, you know, Key West is a pretty nice place to live. And uh, it took about a year for me to realize I had moved more stuff down to Key West every trip I went back to Miami. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. So you were doing that move, yeah. move slowly. Yeah, one, one, one load at a time. <laughs> All right, Gary. So you have done a lot of video work. Oh here yeah. These, and we'll be showing our viewers just after these messages uh, a clip of your oh, video. Yeah. But you also, of course, do one of horn eyes. Radio, audio, anything to do with sound, audio, video. I've been trained motion picture work, um, and this Key West lets me use all my abilities and accumulate everything together in one big nut. Mm -hmm. well, like it says, when the Key West, Key West, we're the weird GoPro. It's true. Isn't that a good saying? It's a great saying. <laughs> it makes sense. I'm a pro. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break right now, but I'll be back with Gary Eck right after these messages. Stay with us.